Are you applying for internships or for your first full-time software engineer job? If you are, you're going to be asked about fundamental CS concepts, and it would be awful if you pass other interviews but fail to simply articulate the difference between a concurrent and a parallel process and then make the interviewer have second thoughts. There are many CS concepts, but there are really only a couple that you will be asked on during the interview loop. I was asked on them when I interviewed at Amazon for an internship, at Clear Street for a new grad position, and at more companies when I was interviewing for junior roles. And in this video, I'm going to share these concepts with you and all the details you need to easily ace these questions when you're asked on them. One thing before we get started, make sure you don't mess up by not practicing this out loud. Ask your friend to act as the interviewer and ask you these questions that we are going to cover. You do it once or twice before you interview and this 30 minute investment will make sure that you strongly check at least one box during your interview loop. The first two concepts are concurrency and parallelism and you'll usually be asked to explain the difference between the two and they are different. Concurrency relates to the ability of a system to execute multiple tasks at the same time. A simple example in the real world is like if you cook in the kitchen and let's say you're going to cook an omelet, you need some butter to put on the pan and some eggs. You can cook concurrently by first putting the butter on the pan and turning it on and then breaking the eggs and whisking them. You start another task before the first one finishes instead of waiting for the butter to be hot first, finishing that task and only then going for the eggs. And this is one example of concurrency. You could also, if you're very skilled, break the eggs in one hand and at the same time put the butter on the pan and turn the stove on. This is another example of concurrency because you started another task before finishing the first one, but in this case, you are also doing both tasks at the same time. And this means that you're not just cooking concurrently, but you're doing it in parallel. So the difference between concurrency and parallelism is that parallelism is a specific case of concurrency where both tasks are running at the same time. If you run two tasks at the same time, you're always concurrent because you started another task before finishing the first one. But running concurrently doesn't necessarily mean that the tasks run in parallel because you can interleave between the tasks. Start task A, then pause its execution, then start task B, then pause its execution, then switch back to task A and continue running it and so on. So concurrency has one condition where you start another task before you finish the first one. And this condition gives us two options. The first one is interleaving between the tasks and the second one is running the tasks at the same time which is what we call parallelism. Now there are two types of tasks that can execute concurrently whether in parallel or not. And these are threads and processes. And to really tell the difference, let's look at Microsoft's definition. According to Microsoft, each process provides the resources needed to execute a program. A process has a virtual address space, executable code, open handles to system objects, a security context, a unique process identifier, environment variables, a priority class, minimum and maximum working set sizes, and at least one thread of execution. Each process is started with a single thread, often called the primary thread, but can create additional threads from any of its threads. So let's break this down. A process is an executing program and the process also provides the program with resources. A virtual address space is basically a range of addresses in the RAM, and the reason it's called virtual is because the memory the executing program accesses is mapped from the physical one. So two processes can have the same virtual address space, but they will actually be mapped to a different physical address space. And this helps with efficiency of memory access and safety so that one process doesn't access the memory of another one, also known as segmentation fault. The next term is executable code, and that's just the compiled code of the process the CPU is running. System objects are things like files and directories, a security context, you can think of it as a simple data structure that contains whatever resources the process can and cannot access. The process identifier known as the PID is a unique ID that each process has. Environment variables are variables just like you have in a method or global variables, but on the process level and depending on the operating system, they will be inherited by any sub process. A priority class is an attribute of each process that defines how much CPU time should be allocated to it 
and how the CPU should prioritize which process to execute next. Working set sizes are for the amount of RAM that is currently being used by the process. And lastly, the thread of execution is the sequence of instructions, a unit of execution that is run by the CPU. A process can have multiple threads, but each of them will share the virtual address space of the process. They have their own scheduling priority within the process, and each thread has only one set of instructions, its own thread of execution. So that's really the difference. Processes are separated from each other in different address spaces and can have multiple threads, while the threads share the same address space and the resources that are allocated to the process, and they can each have only a single unit of instructions to execute on the CPU. Threads that execute concurrently, whether in parallel or not, can have race conditions. When you have two or more threads of execution that share a resource like a variable, if one of them writes to that variable, then the behavior can be unpredictable. Even though each of these methods that run in their own thread have only a single line of code, we still have a race condition, and this is because writing is not an atomic instruction. Once the code compiles, it's actually three instructions. We read the value of the variable from memory, update it, and then store it back in memory. If we have a context switch before the last instruction, the read instruction will still read the old value even though we started executing the line of code for writing first, because that value was still not updated in the memory. And for that, we use mutexes that lock a shared resource so that only one thread can access it at a time. Continuing on the topic of memory, a common term that can pop up is garbage collection. Garbage collection is how programming languages like Python and Java free memory that is not used, usually by unreferenced objects. And this helps to prevent memory leaks, memory that is held by a process but that is not actually used. Now, here's something that you might have noticed. Sometimes when you restart your computer or your phone, you can see that after the restart, you actually freed some space on your hard drive, especially if you haven't restarted for a long while. This is because usually operating systems will allocate to the process some memory in the hard drive to provide even more address space than what the main memory alone can provide. And since garbage collectors aren't perfect in always preventing memory leaks, more and more unused memory is piled up and then after the restart, all the address space of all the processes is freed up and because some of it was on the hard drive, you see that somehow, now it has more free space. If you're thinking how does garbage collection run when we just execute our Python program, that's because you're not just executing a set of instructions, but you're running the Python program and passing it a program you wrote. So Python is not just a programming language, but also a runtime environment for the code you write in Python. As it executes the code, it counts references to the different objects in your executing code and keeps track of what to garbage collect when the reference count to that object drops to zero. And this can happen, for example, when you have local variables of a method that just returned. These local variables still exist in memory, but they will never be accessed again. So the reference count will go down to zero and the garbage collector will free that memory. The final common question that you should expect to be asked from my experience is the difference between arrays and linked lists. Arrays are stored in memory in contiguous blocks, so each element in the array is next to each other in the memory. This gives us the fast O of 1 access, but this also means that adding values to the array is very costly because then we would need to shift the other values and if the memory address after the last index of the array is not free, we will need to shift the whole array to a new location, which is why the time complexity of resizing the array is O of N. With linked lists, each node contains a value and a pointer to the next node in the list. The pointer is just a numeric value, but represents the place in memory that the next node is stored in. And if you want to impress your interviewer, you can also tell them that the value of the pointer is a memory address in the virtual address space of the process it is running in, not the physical address space. Since linked lists are scattered around, this means that we can't directly access a specific node, but we'll have to traverse through the list to reach it, which would be ON in time complexity. But adding or removing a node once we have the pointer to it is only an O of 1 in time complexity because we don't need to shift all the other nodes. If your recruiter tells you that one of your interview loops is going to be about CS concepts or fundamentals, this is what it's going to be about. 
And if the recruiter doesn't tell you that, make sure to clarify with them what's the topic of each of your interviews for any internship, junior or new grad role, so you don't get surprised. And you also don't need to worry about asking because they are on your side. 